In today's video, I'm going to be discussing a pandemic threat that is possibly 100 times worse than COVID and scientists are pretty worried. That's the focus of the video. Let's get into it and talk through all the details. All right, now first off from the very start, I just want to throw this out there right away. I am not here to scare anybody, but rather I want to bring this to your attention because just this week alone, we got some new developments on this where the virus is now transferring to humans right here in the United States. And I feel like it's only fair for all of us to realize what is really going on and this new threat that scientists are very worried about because, again, it's transferring to humans. I'm not sure about you, but if that is going to impact all of us here domestically in the United States and possibly globally, uh, I probably want to know about that and, again, why I want to bring this to your attention. But as of right now, please do not worry about this, but this is something that possibly may be coming. Let's cross our fingers that it doesn't because it'd be really bad if it did. But at the same time, I want you to be aware of this. So with that being said, let's jump into it and... Uh, I'll talk through all the details as far as what I've learned with all of the research that I've done on this. However, really fast before we get into it, can I ask a huge favor of you? If you have not done so yet, will you please make sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting the button right down below the video. Also, right next to the subscribe button is a share button. Please feel free to share this video with your friends on your social media so they can also see what is really going on and so they can stay up to date of what's actually happening right now. It's a weird time out there. And again, <laughs> seriously, the last few years have been uh, very, very weird for all of us. And again, I just want to do what I can to keep you updated as I'm here for you every single day. So again, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe down below and let me talk through the details. All right, so like I said, just a few days ago, earlier this week, we got some new developments. Let me explain the details about this and why scientists are absolutely freaking out about this because they're very worried. Again, the transference of this uh, virus into humans as of just a few days ago is a new development. We've never had this before. Well, we have a little bit, but on a very small scale. But basically what they're finding is that this virus is now mutating. Uh, that's a bad problem, okay? <laughs> so here's what it comes down to. Avian flu. Now, that's just a fancy word of saying bird flu, okay? Avian bird, uh, bird flu, okay? Now, we might think of it as, oh yeah, I've heard about that. Chickens and turkeys and all kinds of stuff like this. We hear about it all the time, right? It rolls through chicken farms and turkey farms every so often, a couple, you know, maybe once or twice a year. And it's like, oh my, now chicken and uh, turkey and egg prices are going way up because, you know, flocks are being wiped out because of this bird flu, okay? Bad situation. And it's a sad situation too, right? But now here's what's happening. They've already found this avian flu in four different cattle herds across four different states. In other words, it's transferring to cows, cattle, right? Things like this. So now these cows and these uh, cattle herds are now experiencing this as well. Well, get this. Just a couple days ago on Monday, a few days ago, a dairy worker in the state of Texas, shout out to Texas if you're watching. Um, yeah, uh, Texas, a dairy worker came down with bird flu, this new strain of this bird flu. Okay. So yes, this is a real thing. Now, uh, uh, fortunately, this person is pretty good. Um, apparently they're uh, experiencing conjunctivitis, which is pink eye. Okay. <laughs> okay. If you're ever wondering what that is, have you ever had pink eye, by the way? Uh, you're like just living your life. And then one day you wake up and you're like, dude, my eyes don't open. <laughs> have you ever had that? They're so crusty. They like don't even open. Um, bad situation. I hope you never get experience it if you haven't. Um, but yeah, it's kind of a bad thing, right? And then your eyes like not a good situation. It's very, very contagious. Uh, but my point is, apparently this person is just experiencing that conjunctivitis, um, okay? Um, but anyway, inflammation of the eye. Uh, but anyway, uh, so as a result of that, luckily they're fine. It sounds like for the most part, but that is not the case for most people that can uh, contract this uh, this avian flu. Let me uh, tell you here, okay? Again, not here to scare anybody, but I'm telling you the details based on the research that I was just doing. Going back to 2003, okay? So what is that, 21 years ago? As I film this video right now in 2024, okay? So going back 21 years, 52% of people that contract uh, this avian flu um, don't make it. That's a very, very, very high fatality rate, 52%. Now, I want to say this as well. I don't know the number of people that have contracted this in the last 21 years, okay? I did not find that information. I was looking for it, wondering, okay, 52%, are we talking like, you know, five people? Like, what are the details here, right? Like, what is the percentage of people that have actually received this or that have, that have gotten it? Is it 100 people and 52 didn't make it? That's very high, okay? So if we look at it from a very basic standpoint here, even if it's just a handful of people, you know, 100 people, just for easy math purposes, that means that 48 survived and and 52 did not. That's very, very high. And again, 
I'm not a scientist, I'm not a doctor, and I'm not gonna pretend like I am either, but I can do research and I know how to read, okay? So my point is, this is what I've found with the research here, and uh, this is something we certainly do not want to happen here, but as I was reading the details about this, these scientists are suggesting that this could be, if, 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 if this happens, and if this turns into a full-blown pandemic, like what we saw a couple years ago, and it turns out to be something highly contagious and it starts spreading human to human because of these new variants and these new um, mutations of this virus, we could be looking at a massive, massive pandemic. And they're saying this could be worse, 100x, 100x worse than COVID uh, from years ago. Okay, so yeah, there you go. Okay, that would be a bad situation. Again, like I said earlier at the beginning of this video, we do not want this to happen under any circumstances. We definitely do not want this. In fact, we don't even want it in um, in poultry. We don't even want it in birds and cattle, things like that. Why? Okay, well, let's just think about it logically for a second. If bird flu f uh, goes through a, a turkey farm or a chicken farm and it wipes out a flock of, say, 10 million birds, guess what happens? Well, now those birds were doing a few different things. They were possibly laying eggs or they were possibly going to be uh, meat that we were going to consume at some point, right? So my point is, what does that do to chicken and egg prices? It drives prices higher. Again, supply and demand. Prices always predicated on supply and demand. If demand is equal or higher and supply is less, prices must go up, right? If supply is very high and demand goes down, well, then prices must go down as well, right? So again, let me give you a quick, just a really quick analogy on this whole supply demand thing. Think about water, okay? Water right now. If somebody walked up to you and said, hey, I have a bottle of water here. I'm charging $10 for it. Do you want it? No, no one's going to pay $10 for a bottle of water. Why? Why would they? Uh, water is abundant, okay? It's abundant. Therefore, there's massive amounts of supply. Demand is whatever it is. Therefore, price does not uh, dictate a $10 bottle of water because, you know, water is very uh, abundant. It's There's massive, massive supply of it. Now, let's put ourselves in the desert, okay? We're all stranded in the desert for three days, okay? We're all just like so thirsty, right? Oh, anything. I would do anything for water. Some guy walks by with a gallon of water and says, hey, I have a gallon of water here. Um, I'm selling it for $1,000. Would you pay it? You probably would, right? Now that one uh, gallon of water has a very high value because it is scarce. There's high demand, there's an, uh, there's scarcity, as in very little supply, one gallon of water, uh, we'll gladly pay $1,000 for that gallon of water because it means survival, make sense? So anyway, I don't know how this uh, turned in from uh, turned into a, an economic lesson, um, but apparently I went down that road. So again, <laughs> I, I'm talking about uh, this potential pandemic threat of 100x worse than COVID, and somehow I'm sitting here talking about supply and demand and economics, I'm sorry, but, uh, I guess that's just where my brain goes. So <laughs> there you go. Now you know what I think about all day, right? <laughs> that's literally about what I think about, okay? Anyway, uh, so there you go. This is what I wanted to bring to your attention really quickly. And again, please don't worry about this. Do not lose sleep over it. There's no need to right now. But this is something that um, I certainly want to bring to your attention because uh, scientists are getting pretty worried about this and they're saying this could spiral into a massive, massive thing if this thing whole uh, this whole thing kind of turns out which by the way they are talking about um, potential treatments and vaccines and stuff like that and again it's not something they're going to push on us or something they're going to say oh you got to go and get this thing now it looks like they're just monitoring this very closely and potentially working up some type of you know treatment slash you know um, vaccine type of situation in the event this were to take off, okay? By the way, the administration is watching it closely. Nothing to worry about here as of right now, but something we certainly want to keep on our radar and at least keep, um, you know, in the kind of the forefront here going forward in case this does actually spiral out of control, okay? Anyway, I'm gonna leave it at that. No more economics out of this video. So if you want more economic lessons, <laughs> make sure to watch all the videos here on the channel, which by the way, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, please subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet. Share the video with your friends on my social media. Again, big old share button waiting for you right down below the video. Also, go back and check out any other, other thousands of videos here on the channel, including those in the video library or those that you uh, that have hand-selected for you down below in the description or the top of the comment section or the videos that you see on your screen now. Check out those videos as well. Thank you so much for your support. Have a nice day. Enjoy and take care. And I'll catch you.